leaf litter <laughs> leaf litter and challa wood are great grazing material for them good hello everyone and welcome to fins and whiskers if you're new here make sure you boop that subscribe button in this note and we'll get on to the video before i begin i know the frog bit is going pretty crazy right now and blocking light from almost all my carpet plants and the embolia is also growing crazy so just spare me <laughs> in this time of quarantine. So some of you have seen my autosynchronous breeding series and if you haven't I will link the playlist that you can check out but I realize that I've discussed breeding and not exactly adult autosynchronous care which is also pretty important if you want to breed autosynchronous so this video is going to be all about autosynchronous care and your intermediate care guide for them so before anything when you are getting your autosynchronous it's very important that you do not take blame if within two weeks or a few weeks of purchase that your autosynchronous just start to randomly die off a lot of people are surprised by this and don't exactly know oh hello there <laughs> don't exactly know what happened so I will explain this basically if the owners before you did not take good care or they did not have sufficient food when they were before your care their bacteria can die and this bacteria keeps them alive now they can still eat without this bacteria however they will not be able to digest or process any of the food and they will pass away and this can take time so don't worry if it's been like a couple weeks in your care and they just start to randomly die off because it could very well be that the bacteria had already died before you and that's very unfortunate and another thing you can look out for when buying autos is to ask what they feed them chances are if they say they just graze on algae they have not been eating sufficient enough if they are in bareback tanks then chances are they also have not been eating properly so just be sure to check on what they've eaten in their care of course sometimes you will have to take chances anyway and just see which ones survive and which ones don't that's basically what I had to do for mine so of course autosynchronous are shoaling groups which means they should not be in anything less than a minimum shoal size of six now this is very very important because actually recently I thought I lost three autos but I actually only lost one so I have five autosynchronous right now and I thought I lost three because for the longest time I just didn't see any of them it was very hard to count each one to make sure what the exact number was because they were less confident and less outgoing with just one passing away of a group of six so it really does show that six is very much the bare minimum to keep them in a shoal size and it does differentiate very much the difference definitely shows because I rarely see them going around the tank together now and they're just kind of more secluded so it's very important that you do have a sufficient shoal size and of course more is always better but it depends on the tank size they are most likely to show shoaling activity when and trust when they are in a sufficient shoal size. So make sure you have at least six autos or more if you can. Your tank must also be fully established and fully planted. I stand by this because it needs to have an established environment so that the ecosystem is balancing itself out with algae and plants and microorganisms and all of the great stuff that they need and also it needs to be fully planted because you are going to need to have food in here all the time and if you're anything like me and are keeping a completely herbivorous tank then it definitely does not help with the microorganisms and worms they just keep growing and it's just so much a lot of people also think that you cannot keep more than 
six autos in a 10 gallon tank, but the truth is you can keep up to 10 autos in a 10 gallon tank if it is fully planted and you have an established ecosystem. The bio load of auto sinkless is small and because you need to be providing food all the time anyway, the algae consistency doesn't really matter as much. So this is why definitely you want to have a fully planted tank because you will need the plants to suck up all the nitrates and all the things that these snails and worms don't do. Although you will end up with a lot of snails in a herbivorous tank and worms that grow very long. So it does help because they help to keep the water getting from cloudy. But that being said, don't do anything special to your veggies and leave them in. A lot of people blanch their veggies before putting them in the tank so that they are softer or they sink and the autos are able to chew on it easier. But this also shortens the time in the tank for it and it does lose some nutrients, although not that much for it to matter. But the important part is that it does shorten the time that you can leave it in the tank. I personally put any fresh leafy vegetable a large piece into the tank and I leave it in there until they consume it all. Bigger leaves makes it more comfortable and easier for them to graze on and if you have a lot of autos then it also helps for them to not feel like they are in the way of each other like with zucchini pieces they're just it's only so round and so only so many autos can be on it at the same time. All auto sinkless have preferences on the stages of the decaying vegetable or plant. So leaving the vegetable in there from the time that it is fresh until they consume it will assure that they find the time where it is most appealing to them and then eat it during that time. So some autos might eat it right away even if it's not too soft and some autos will wait for it to be very soft or in the middle. So that's why I prefer to leave the vegetable in until they consume it all and of course snails and worms will help you out with this for sure because they will also be nibbling on these plants and helping to keep the water from getting cloudy but of course if you are worried about that and want to be more safe than sorry, then you can do small water changes while the vegetable is in there, but it is important to keep it in there. A lot of times people find that veggies aren't appealing to auto sinkless, but they just need to have its availability of different textures without taking it out too soon, and consistency is the key for this reason. Um, if you stop trying a veggie for even a week or a couple of weeks and they haven't showed interest, you haven't introduced it enough. They will eventually figure out that it's food, especially if they are hungry, and they will also find the preferable time that they like to eat it. If you only try it a few times, they might not acknowledge it as food, so it's very important that you are consistent and don't give up. And again, having snails, detritus worms, and filter feeders such as copods which are those very, very tiny microorganisms that you might see just hopping around the tank. They're not dangerous at all and they help to keep the water from getting cloudy. However, veggies that leave a smell or release a gas such as broccoli or cauliflower, you definitely want to take it out after two days because it will make your tank start to smell foul and it's just better to avoid leaving those kind of veggies in for too long. However, leafy vegetables like spinach, Swiss chard, lettuce, um, even kale, although it does start to smell a little bit after some time, you can leave it in there and it will be fine. However, autosinclus are not strictly herbivores. In the wild, they graze on algae, but they also are eating the microorganisms that are living inside the algae so they are getting sources of protein from that. So besides providing plant material and veggies, you can also provide live foods or dehydrated or freeze-dried foods that will include protein in their diet as well and can also encourage them to breathe. Since live foods are difficult for me to get right now because of quarantine, I do feed I do feed freeze-dried brine shrimp for them. And they come in cubes and I just put them in the water and they 
just break apart and they notice them sooner or later. And then for the babies, I also use powdered brine shrimp. And this could also be found by the adult autos if it's on pieces of wood or other plants. So this definitely helps if you can't get your hands on live foods or are worried about them coexisting with your autosynclus for a while because if you have a completely herbivorous tank like me, it might happen. So just something to keep in mind and a great option to also include in their diet. Besides veggies and protein, you can also provide algae supplements. And I use the Pleco Wafers because although they don't have the best like quality ingredients, most algae wafers don't really. They always have some kind of meal in them. But this works out because they also do contain protein in them. When your autos are chowing down on these wafers, they're actually also enjoying the protein in them as well. And I also like Sea Chem's Chlorella Flakes, and this is just like an alternative to spirulina in flake form, and it has a lot of vitamins and minerals in it, and also squid, so <laughs> it does have protein as well. So these are awesome. Make sure you have algae wafers on hand and any kind of algae formulated food <laughs> so that they have variety in their diets and if they prefer things to some things then they have the option if that made any sense at all. Leaf litter and, <laughs> Leaf litter and chala wood are great grazing material for them as it does break down and chala wood breaks down faster than most wood so it does help them to graze and get some nutrients from them as well and they will love grazing on different leaves, dried leaves of course, and get tannin from them as well so it really works out. So definitely recommend these for additional, um, additional nutrients and something to add into their diet so that even if they are not eating a solid food like veggies or protein, they are still able to graze on something that gives them nutrients. And the last and best piece of advice I can give for this Autosynclus care guide is to have persistence. What makes Autosynclus such a tricky fish to care for is only the mere fact that we haven't explored experiences enough. With this, I am not only confident that we can take care of them in necessary ways, but we can also begin to breed them in captivity and of course if you haven't seen my series of breeding them and how to take care of the fry I will leave the playlist here and also in the description and also in the comments so be sure to check that out and I hope this really helped you guys make autosynclus feel a little less intimidating they are just misunderstood. I definitely recommend having autosynclus. We need the experiences. Of course, this is just my own and you shouldn't only go off of someone's advice. Always do your own research as well. But this has just been my go-to advice when that has really helped me to keep autosynclus alive and thriving and also breeding. So I hope this really helped you guys, and I hope you guys experience the joy and wonderfulness of autosynclus. I know this video is kind of sad right now because the autosynclus are not going around the tank and showing that level of confidence because there's only five. I am dying to get more autosynclus as soon as this quarantine ends or my online store that I love is in stock with them, but alas, they are not. I can't wait to keep bringing more autosynclus content for you guys because there's so much that we need to learn still. And also, the autosynclus fry is now three months. This is six. Three months and three months old, and I am so excited. The growth is a slow process, but I am still recording every bit of it, and I will still be making videos in this series. So be sure to hit the notification bell so you are notified when those videos come out. But that is basically it. I hope you guys learned something. I hope that you enjoy the experience of having autos. And this helps you take care of your own 
or soon to be your own. And thank you guys for watching.